Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We'll just give it our traditional two minutes just to make sure that everybody who wants to be here is here. I see the participant um, numbers are still going up, so we'll just give it two minutes. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, evening, and morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we, we are going to start shortly.
Uh, good afternoon. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thank you very much for joining us and welcome to our afternoon session. And in this session, as I hope you can see on our schedule, is a meet with Ms. Maria Francesca Spatolisano, who is the Assistant Secretary General for Policy Coordination and Interagency Affairs and Officer in Charge of the Office of the Secretary General's Envoy on Technology, or the Tech Envoy, as we commonly call it. Um, after she's speaking, uh, she's spoken, she's going to answer a few broad questions, if you have any, and then we're going to have an open consultation on the proposed multi-stakeholder high-level body um, that is specifically on paragraph 93A, of the Secretary General's roadmap for digital cooperation. And we will explain more before we start that part. And that part is gonna be facilitated by myself from the IGF Secretariat and Yuping from um, the um, Tech Envoy's office. And just a reminder to everybody that the meeting is being recorded and it's also being broadcast on IGF's um, YouTube channel and it's being transcribed and a summary record will be made available after the series of this meeting. So that's the end of this week or Monday by the latest. Um, if you want to make an intervention, please, first of all, try and use the speaking queue so that everybody can see where they are in the speaking queue and the link is being pasted into the chat right now. And if that fails, you can put your hand up and then somebody from the Secretariat will insert your name into the speaking queue. So either myself or Yu Ping will call your name um, to give you the floor before you speak. And um, please, when you speak, uh, please say your name, your organization that you represent and also the stakeholder group. And um, we are going to try on a first come first serve basis, but we also want to achieve some stakeholder balance. So we'll see how that goes. And please also state whether or not you're speaking in your personal capacity or for your um, organization. So with that, I would um, like to introduce the, give the Assistant Secretary General the floor. Thank you very much, Shengtai. And uh, hello to everybody. Good afternoon um, in Geneva. Good morning here in New York. I'm very honored to join this first open consultation and multi-stakeholder advisory group meeting of the IGF. Uh, the issues discussed here are intricately, I would say, connected to the Secretary General's roadmap for digital cooperation and all related work streams of the Office of the Technology Envoy. As you know, I recently became the officer in charge of the Tech Envoy Office. Uh, the other hat I am wearing is the Assistant Secretary General for Policy Coordination and Interagency Affairs in the Department of Economic and Social Affairs in TESA. So I am aware of the form and function of the Internet Governance Forum and how it served as a platform for the global community multi-stakeholders dialogue on digital policies. For the past 15 years, and now preparing the 16th annual meeting, the IGF has made great strides, uh, breaking down silos and between stakeholder groups, very important. Right now, of course, almost everywhere in the world, uh, people have lived through unprecedented times of uncertainty due to COVID-19 pandemic. Indeed, the digital technologies and internet have in many ways helped us keep the world moving, helped everybody to continue with its dynamics online 
or virtually. At the same time, the pandemic has also exacerbated the inequalities, including the digital divides, and it has set as an imperative for all of us to work for a safer and more inclusive and affordable internet for all. We also witness the multidimensional risks, of course, linked to the internet in the areas, for instance, of data privacy, cybersecurity, misinformation, and others. So the IGF mandate anchored in the Tunis agenda and the Secretary General Roadmap for Digital Cooperation can advance our joint efforts. We can and we must harness the digital world, the internet, technologies for good, for sustainable development, and for the well being of all of us. So, in the office of the Tech Envoy, I am committed to bringing the roadmap's recommendations to reality to work towards strengthening collaboration, developing capacity in digital policy, and ensuring technologies work for people, not against. As you know, the roadmap puts emphasis on a strengthened IGF as a model for global digital cooperation, particularly in paragraph 93. The Office of the Envoy on Technology has been working closely with UN DESA. And in working together, we are both committed to support the IGF evolution towards a more forward-looking and purposeful platform and to continue to be open to all, inclusive, bottom-up, and multi-stakeholder. Now, consultations carried across regions and disciplines of the roadmap, including the IGF Plus model, underlined the need for a stronger IGF mechanism. This requires long-term sustainability that can be achieved through stronger stakeholder engagement and keeping the forum's thematic focus current and relevant for all. In this context, the roadmap also calls for establishment of a multi-stakeholder high-level body. Now, I am aware of the historic instrumental guidance the Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group, you, the MAG, has provided to the IGF annual meeting program. While the annual meeting is critical for all of us to meet and exchange ideas virtually, <laughs> this time, hopefully again in presence, uh, to exchange ideas, concerns, I was saying, and good practice, we must think beyond it and we must think longer term. The proposed high-level multi-stakeholder body is an opportunity to reach those that do have an important role to play in the internet's ecosystem, but are not yet part of our discussions. Today, my office, UNDESA and the IGF Secretariat are carrying out a joint effort on consultation on paragraph 93a. And I call for your participation, representing different and diverse stakeholder groups in completing the short questionnaire. Please do complete the short questionnaire. We have also requested member states through their missions at the UN in both New York and Geneva, of course. Now, thank you very much for having me. I will stay online a little bit more until my next appointment of the day, listening to your thoughts. And I look forward to continuing the engagement with the IGF and all the stakeholders. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Assistant Secretary General. Um, I would first of all like to give the floor to the chair of the multi-stakeholder advisory group, um, Ms. Henriette Estoyston, um, to say a few words. Um, thank you very much, um, Shangatai. Um, Ms. Um, Svatolisano, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you to this IJF Open Consultation and MAG meeting on behalf of all the MAG members of IJF 2021. Um, the IJF community collaborated very closely with the 
Office of the Special Advisor to the UN Secretary General in the lead up to the development of, of the, the roadmap. And, and we see this as a very significant opportunity for the IJF to consolidate what it has achieved in building community and building bottom up processes, but also working towards being more focused and having more impact. And so we look forward to collaborating with yourself, with the Office of the Tech Envoy, and with you and Dessa, as we always have done. And um, looking forward to also have uh, the benefit of a fresh pair of eyes, and which come with a lot of international experience, and, and which I'm sure will, will give us insights that we can benefit from. So we really look forward to having you with us. Welcome, and uh, back to Shanghai. Uh, thank you very much, Henriette. Um, I would also like to introduce um, Yu Ping, who is going to be the co-facilitator of the next session. Um, if she could just switch on a camera and speak. Hi, Chenge Tai, and thank you so much to Dessa for organizing this meeting and to all colleagues for joining us. Really, it is a pleasure and honor always to be part of the IGF MAG. And we really thank you for all the cooperation, collaboration, and support that the MAG has given our office um, over the last one, two years, particularly with um, in regards to the follow-up to the high-level panel report, the subsequent consultations in preparation for the roadmap, and then subsequently in response to the roadmap itself. And we really look forward to this continuing. We valued very much the inputs that the IGF MAG has brought to the entire process. And we've tried our best to really keep up to date with some of the discussions that are going on. Jason, my colleague, has been with you through a lot of this process as, as well. So just to reaffirm that we are fully open and committed to continuing this very excellent engagement and hearing the very important views that all of you bring to this table. Uh, thank you very much, Yuping. Um, I wonder if there's um, anybody has got one or two general questions. Uh, we haven't gotten yet to the consultation on 93A, but if anybody has got any general questions um, that they would want to ask, uh, we can hear them. Let me just see if I can see the speaking queue, see if anybody has registered um, for that. And we have um, Rem Bahado. If you could please just introduce yourself, please. Yes, please. Yes, please speak. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Rem Bahadur Bike. I'm from the Nepal, and then I'm the chairperson of Jagra Media Center. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Just I want to learn, just I'm hearing. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yes. so, all right, all right. Thank you very much. Yeah. And then we have uh, uh, Titi Kasa, please. Okay, thanks, Rengatai. Can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Okay, so good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. My name is uh, Concettina Cassa. I work for AGID, Italian government. I'm former MAG member and also co-chair of the MAG working group on EGF strategy and strategy. So um, as you know, this working group was um, established last year with the purpose to develop uh, implementable action in the short and medium term on how to strengthen the IGF and position it strategically in the evolving digital cooperation landscape. So uh, the, the working group uh, um, starting in twofold, the IGF mandate uh, from Tunis agenda and also the UN Secretary General roadmap for uh, digital cooperation that uh, was launched in June 2020. Uh, just very shortly, the scope of the working group is uh, develop strategy for a more focused agenda and also to produce more tangible uh, outcomes and also for a better follow-up on, on, the, on the action and recommendation that uh, are emerging from the IGF-based discussion, but also on, uh, is working on IGF recognition, visibility, and so on. And the last year, the working group has um, a broad discussion on paragraph 93A of the UN Secretary General Roadmap for uh, Digital Cooperation related to the multi-stakeholder high-level body. And uh, during the discussion, there were different views on the implementation of multi-stakeholder high-level body. And the, the results of the discussion have, have been included 
in, in the document that's been published uh, last September, the response to the paper on option for the future of digital cooperation. And um, in particular, uh, the annex of this core document includes three proposal to establish the new multi-stakeholder um, high-level body that have been developed by the, the, by the members of the working group. So there are three approaches included in, in, the, in the annex. One, the approach A is uh, having a, a new body within the AGF separate and complementary to the MAG. The second approach, approach B, is um, for a thing for a, an in-depth reform of the MAG, the high-level body MAG plus approach. And the approach C that uh, is um, foreseeing for a two tier multi-stakeholder IGF leadership structure, including uh, the multi-stakeholder high-level body and, and the MAG. So now I want to give the, the floor to Livia Wolpen, MAG member from Swiss government, who can give you more details on, on the three approaches. Thank you. Okay, um, but uh, when we, we haven't gotten into the discussion of 93A first, this was supposed to be general questions to the oh, Assistant okay. Secretary General. If there's anybody with general questions, other, otherwise we will go into it, into the 93A. Yeah. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll um, call you. I I do have a general question, uh, just in relation to the questionnaire, if it's yes. already available. Okay. The questionnaire that Madame just mentioned. No, the, the questionnaire is going to be sent this week. It's, it's going to be sent this week. So this session is meant to kick it off. And then, um, so we'll have verbal, um, verbal inputs in this session and then we are going to send it to all the missions and also it's going to be published on the IGF website and people with a web form and people can um, it can give the input in the web form or send it to us um, via email but again that is for the um, discussion on 93a here we were just um, discussing if there was any general questions about um, what the tech envoy is doing, or the tech envoy's office is doing, because we all, we all also have Yu Ping and Jason here, and they can answer those questions as well. Trying hmm. again. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Oh, here, please go ahead. Yes, I'm starting my camera. Sorry if it takes uh, a moment. I hope you can see me. Uh, this is Jorge Cancio from the Swiss government. Uh, good afternoon, good morning, uh, good evening to everyone. And uh, welcome and hello to Miss Assistant General Spatolisano. We are very happy to have you here to uh, have uh, you in charge of the Tech Envoy office. And we are thankful to DESA for being uh, able to deputize you to this very important task. As a general comment, I wanted to share with you, as our president uh, mentioned at the IGF in, uh, during last November that we are firm supporters of the implementation of the roadmap. I think we are doing great work together with uh, the Tech Envoy office, which is uh, building up with Yu Ping, with Jason, with the whole team. And of course, also with uh, UNDESA here at the IGF. So we are uh, very much looking forward to uh, making a swift progress in the implementation of the roadmap, especially uh, section 93, but also all the other uh, sections of the roadmap. And I very much agree with what you said that there is a, a strong interconnection between all areas of the roadmap and what is in the, under the purview of the IGF. So uh, the IGF for us has to be the main 
policy and discussion platform for taking forward all the goals of the roadmap. And this, of course, as you said, in a truly multi-stakeholder, open, transparent, and bottom-up fashion with full involvement of the whole IGF community. So I think it's a, a wonderful time now to make such progress. As you said, COVID-19 has shown uh, with uh, as a magnifying glass all the challenges, but also all the opportunities uh, that uh, the digitization gives us as economies and societies. And we very much look forward to working with you on this. Um, I will share with you later on some other uh, more specific points on the high level body. But as Cheng Tai said, this will come a bit later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jorge. The next person on the speaking queue is Timea Suta. Uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Changatai. I hope you can hear me, you can see me. Yes, there it is. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, this is Patolisano. Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Um, my name is Timo Shutu. I am joining you from the International Chamber of Commerce um, on behalf of its initiative, Business Action, to support the Information Society. I will have probably uh, more to input when we get to the discussion on 93A. Um, but uh, just for the interim, uh, I would like to pose a few questions, um, general questions on the technology uh, envoys mandate. As you might already know, ICC has been following the work of the UN Secretary General's panel on digital cooperation since its inception, and we were also a key constituent for the roundtable on recommendation 5 A and B on digital cooperation architecture. We also joined the Secretary General in the launch of his roadmap last summer, and we welcome every opportunity to continue to engage with the global multi-stakeholder community to provide business perspectives on the implementation of the roadmap. Therefore, we welcome um, the creation of the Office of the Technology Envoy and are looking forward to engaging in the work of the Office um, on behalf of businesses worldwide. From the updates uh, provided by colleagues from the Envoy's Office so far, it seems that all roundtables are very active um, in their uh, respective fields, but we would appreciate further clarity on the mandate and work plan of the Office of the Technology Envoy. Our understanding from briefings thus far is that the Office of the Envoy is governed through a project document that is supported by voluntary extra budgetary contributions. So I would like to ask you if you would have any indication for when the document and list of supporters is expected to be cleared for publication. Um, as I said before, um, we can see um, a lot of avenues and synergies for collaboration with the private sector. So we would appreciate um, any clarity on, on, the, on the work of the various roundtables and uh, avenues for um, collaboration with business. And we can see also potential value in creating the high level multi-stakeholder body um, that we will be discussing further on. Um, and I will reserve my comments on that um, for when that's appropriate. Thank you very much, Cengetai. Uh, thank you, Timia. Um, I'm closing the queue at um, Carlos Alfonso, and then we'll go into the next um, stage. But um, let, let's see if there's any other questions uh, first before I hand it over to the ASG. Um, Sumer Gu. Yes, uh, hello. This is Sumer Gu. From, I'm working here in Permanent Mission of Pakistan in Geneva. Uh, my question is related to the multi-stakeholderism. Uh, we see here uh, United Nations has already the mechanisms like uh, VISIS Forum, the World Summit on, on Information Society, and ITU is already working with the help of so many working groups of the council that deal with the internet related issues. And, uh, and so where do we see IGF not duplicating the efforts of the United Nations in addressing the issues related to internet. Because we see uh, so, so many things that are getting uh, duplication, overlapping of the efforts. So how do uh, we see IGF to be uh, a more force multiplier rather than just uh, a repetition? 
Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, the next uh, person is Justin Fair. Justin? Sure. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Justin Fair. I'm at the U.S. Uh, Department of State, uh, and I'm speaking on behalf of the, the government of the United States this morning. And um, i be very quick. I just uh, wanted to echo um, the question uh, raised by our colleagues from the International Chamber of Commerce, um, particularly concerning, um, has there been any progress in, in providing more transparency on the mandate or the funding for the Tech Envoy's office and this new work stream on digital cooperation. Um, I think that those questions will be, are inherently important as we consider this work, but particularly important as we discuss commissioning new bodies and or advisory groups like the ones we'll, we'll discuss a little bit later. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Justin. Um, I think I'll just finish the queue and then because I, th I think the ASG also has to go. And so I'll just finish the queue so that we can be um, quick with this section. Um, Mr. Mathieu Fantin Nati, please. Mathieu, you've got the floor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, sorry, I do my apology. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Shangatai, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Patolizano, for your presentation. I am a, a rec recently newly MAG member, and I, I'm a member of the representative of the Italian Parliament. Uh, I, um, I have just a question, just a thought, that uh, uh, I realized that in this year that uh, a lot of parliamentarians uh, won't be, uh, want to be involved uh, in the uh, IGF uh, or uh, uh, high, high digital level uh, 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 you have a process uh, because, and I think that it's really important to, to involve as many parliamentarians as possible. Uh, I have a lot of colleagues that are willing, uh, are willing to um, to get in together to talk about internet government issue. I have, um, I think, this my view, that there are a lot of uh, parliamentarians in the world that uh, nowadays. Uh, they don't have uh, a commission uh, just uh, dedicated to the internet governance or the digitalization. I would like to know if there is a plan in the, uh, for the uh, UN days uh, in a sort of way to involve in a formal way as many parliamentarians as possible in order to share the best practices and to uh, create uh, more awareness uh, in the people and uh, in the policy making. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Matia. Uh, final and our last speaker in this section is um, Carlos Sofonso. Uh, yeah, the floor. Uh, yes, Shengetai, I, I uh, put my name there to start the discussion of the uh, paragraph 93, so I can wait for it. Oh, okay, great. Um, uh, that's fine then. Okay, so um, let me just check if um, the ASE is still online and whether or not um, she can respond to any of these questions or give it to um, Yu Ping or Jason too. Yes, uh, thank you. These are uh, all very important questions, but first of all, let me, uh, thank those who took the floor and uh, you all for the support you have expressed and the interest you have expressed in the work of the IGF, MAG, uh, and the Office of the Tech Envoy. Now, first, uh, my, my first point will be to uh, uh, share with you my task here is as a, a officer in charge of the Tech Envoy Office is to ensure the continuity of the office. The office is important in the UN system. The implementation of the roadmap is important. And that's what I'm set to do. We continue the work of the office uh, in my uh, temporary functions uh, as uh, uh, well as I can with the support of a great group of people who are already there and whom I, uh, praise already after only two weeks in the job because they are really good. So that's first thing, continuity, implementing the roadmap. Uh, then 
I thank you those who said the IGF is the main platform and I hear those who say we have to do better. Of course, there are already many proposals on the in front of you. And that's why we are asking, we are consulting, we want to hear more uh, about uh, uh, the views of uh, the stakeholders, not just the member states. And so you're all invited to reply to this uh, survey we are uh, circulating. Uh, certainly we do not intend to duplicate uh, the work, <laughs> but you know, this is uh, important in the UN to understand that there are a lot of constituencies and there are a lot of agencies and there are a lot of uh, uh, regional groupings and what the role of the UN is, is to bring them all together. So I think that this is what we are uh, keeping in mind, be inclusive, be open and find the functional synergies because sometimes the structures are there, it's very difficult to, to you know, uh, change structures, but you can find in what you do, in what others do, the functional synergies. And this is important in an area like this, uh, which is all made of uh, intangible, if you want. Uh, so I would say keep working, continuity, functional synergies, inclusiveness. For the mandate, um, the mandate of the tech Envoy Office went through the uh, ACABQ, so membership is uh, fully aware of the mandate. Um, I will certainly ensure transparency. This is uh, uh, a rule for us. There is no, no secret in the mandate, I would say, but maybe I don't understand the question well enough. Uh, and I will be open to discuss it uh, again bilaterally anytime. Um, so let me see if uh, I can, oh, and the parliamentary involvement is one of the options and uh, proposals uh, which was made uh, previously in some consultations, I think uh, not by uh, the tech office, but was uh, raised already but I will defer to you, Ping, on this one because I'm not fully informed yet. You will forgive me if I only know some things and not yet everything of the office work in my first two weeks. So, you, Ping, would you like to take it up for me? Thank you. Um, colleagues. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit confused as to the question on the, the policy engagement. I mean, as I've already just noted in the chat, the implementation of the roadmap is really open to all interested stakeholders, and we'd be happy to connect colleagues with any of the work streams that you're interested in. And as the ASG had explained, the mandate of the Tech Envoy's Office flows from the roadmap, and the implementation of the roadmap stands at the core of the Tech Envoy's Office. So I do think that will continue, as the ASG has emphasized, and that we really do welcome all policy stakeholders and um, your and MAG members contribution to that part. So we're happy to facilitate those link ups with the work streams that are now ongoing in um, support of the entities. Well, I believe the question that was raised um, from the distinguished delegate of Pakistan was that question about how this interacts with some of the other agencies currently working, such as for instance, ITU. This is where the Office of the Tech Envoy has been very fortunate to capitalize on some of the ongoing engagements and the very strong partnerships that we've had with ITU and other UN agencies active in this field. So for instance, ITU is a champion of the round table on connectivity as well as capacity building. So as to precisely ensure, as the distinguished delegate had mentioned, the complementary with the work streams and the ongoing initiatives of these UN agencies and entities already. So for instance, when it comes to global connectivity, because this is part of the mandate of the ITU, as well as a key focus of the Broadband Commission on Sustainable Development, there are very strong complementarities between what the roadmap is calling for, the areas of implementation, and the ongoing initiatives by these agencies as well. In the same way, when it comes to capacity building, the UNDP is rolling, rolling up a lot of very technical programs and very concrete initiatives that the roadmap will aim to amplify. The roadmap won't create anything new, but simply put together what is ongoing by the various UN agencies within this overall framework of the Secretary General's vision for how the international community and the United Nations can better support member states in these digital challenges. I'm not sure that answered the question, perhaps if there are any further type and the ASG, perhaps the ASG could respond. If not, I could also try and supplement with a few details. 
All right, thank you very much, Yuping, and also thank you very much, um, Assistant Secretary General Spachelacino. Um, let me just check if there's any follow-up as such to this. I don't think so. But if there is, we can always um, go back to it. As the Assistant Secretary General said that she is going to stay on as long as she can to um, just listen in to what the stakeholders um, are saying. But let me start off um, the next session. And as, as I said, it's going to be co-facilitated um, by myself and Yu Ping as well. And um, it is just a very narrowly focused on um, garnering your views on 93A. If, um, Lewis, if you could just please um, show the first slide. I just have two slides just so that we can uh, just concentrate. I think. So um, just a reminder that um, on the Secretary General's roadmap, uh, paragraph 93A says uh, the creating a strategic and empowered multi-stakeholder high-level body, building on the experience of the existing multi-stakeholder advisory group, which would address urgent issues, coordinate follow-up actions on forum discussions and relaying proposed policy approaches and recommendations from the forum to the appropriative normative and decision-making forums. So that's what 93A says. Um, we are, um, this is a joint effort between us, um, the Tech Envoys Office, and we, we are going to be sending out um, a questionnaire. It's gonna be posted on the IDF um, website, and it's also going to be um, sent out to the missions for them to respond, because we know it takes some time to consult and to bring back the answers, because we just want a little bit more information on um, what the stakeholders view are, is on this particular topic, not on everything. We don't want to reopen everything up. It's just on this 93A. Now, if you go to the second slide. So uh, these are the questions that um, we're asking now, and there will be a more refined version um, of these questions that are gonna be posted and of course sent to um, the missions. And so after Yuping has spoken, because she is going to give us a little bit of background, um, tell us a bit about the option paper, et cetera, um, and, how we, uh, and where we are now with this. Um, so after we have spoken, we will open, uh, Yuping has spoken, we will open up the floor and uh, we would like to garner your views on any of these questions. So we would like to limit interventions to four minutes each just in case other people want to um, take the floor and we can get as many views as uh, we can. If you cannot finish, or if there's not enough time for everybody to have their say, you can still send in um, written responses when we publish um, their questionnaire on the website and send it to the missions. So Yung, Yuping, please just give us a slight overview. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chengatai. And you know, without having to go over some ground that I think colleagues are quite familiar with, I'm just, basically going to, again, summarize where we've been in the last two and a half to three years in terms of the process and consultations over the strengthening of the IGF and specifically this issue of the multi-stakeholder high-level body. I think colleagues will be familiar with the fact that this all originated with the high-level panel um, on digital cooperation that Secretary General had convened in 2018, which really discussed how best the international community can come together around digital challenges, not just in the area of the IGF, but more broadly as a whole. And based on that, one of the key recommendations there was the importance of the IGF plus and the strengthening of the IGF as a key mechanism for the digital cooperation architecture and really ensuring that the IGF retained its prominence as the forum for digital cooperation inter and intergovernance, um, internet governance issues. So based on that, the high level panel had come up with a number of key suggestions, including the policy incubators and various other structural improvements for the IGF that was then carried forward in the consultation process that the Office of the Special Advisor had actually conducted with a number of key colleagues around the table, where we really looked at how the high level panel's recommendations could then be taken forward in action oriented outcome focused ways. And this consultation process, which, which across all the various thematic areas took over 100 key member states, stakeholder communities, um, tech companies, multi-stakeholder initiatives, um, networks, and so forth, culminated in the Secretary General's Roadmap for Digital Cooperation issued last June, where 
it comes to the in, to the famous paragraph 93, which lays out very concrete areas where the Secretary General hopes to make progress in terms of taking forward the IGF, strengthening the IGF, and really going towards an IGF plus. In response to that, on the we were very, very honored actually throughout the entire process of following up from the high-level panel on digital cooperation to have the support of the co-champions, the United Arab Emirates and the government of Germany, which had been consolidating the roundtable discussions as a follow-up to the high-level pro uh, panel process, as well as the preparation for the Secretary General's roadmap. And with the Secretary General's roadmap, they then put together an options paper in terms of how to really action, uh, actionalize and concretize the proposals from the high-level panel. And that was the options paper that was submitted by Germany and the UAE to the Secretary General. Subsequently to that, that as well as um, the roadmap formed the basis for the, the MAG, the multi-stakeholder advisory group's own submission of the three options in the response paper, which I believe a colleague from um, Switzerland, Livia, will actually be presenting on a little bit later. All this to say that there has been a very intense process of consultations, which our office has been following quite closely from the beginning, where we are really hoping to see, uh, in some ways, the manifestation of all the various stakeholder views, as well as a sense in which we need to collectively come together now to decide how best to proceed to strengthen the IGF in line with what has appeared to be a general understanding that there really is a need to make the IGF the premier discussion forum, which has been sent to the United Nations and from based on a very bottom up, multi-stakeholder open process of consultation and discussion, such as to ensure that the IGF can actually have impact in its discussions and that a lot of the very important um, topics and themes that are brought together through this very vibrant community can then be translated into the broader digital cooperation activities, as well as the rest of the work with the UN system. So we've been very honored that there really has been this, this commitment and this enthusiasm of the IGF multi-stakeholder community, as well as the IGF itself, the member states supporting the IGF, that there really needs to be this added prominence of the IGF so that it can take on the role that it was envisioned for it in the um, its original mandates and in the World Summit, um, in the WISIS um, Summit documents as well. So we are really looking forward to continuing this process. We actually do hope that given the numerous discussions that have gone over the last few years, we are actually reaching this crescendo where the Secretary General will be able to take stock of all the inputs that he, got to, he has gotten over the process, your very important inputs today, and the questionnaire that DESA will be shortly circulating so as to come to an informed, considered decision about what next for the IGF. And in this, we really count on the support of all the stakeholders and all of you here present here today. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Yuping. Um, so with that, without any further ado, I would like to give the floor to Carlos. Please, Carlos Afonso. Hello, hello. Thank you. Thank you, Shingatai. Um, uh, the uh, discussion is, I think, has, has already advanced. And uh, uh, we have uh, excellent working paper, a position paper made by the working group on strategies, which advances three approaches to the treatment of the question of formation of this high level multi-stakeholder body. And it's very detailed, it's an excellent document. And uh, uh, at the end of it, I, I uh, decided to, to support uh, approach B which is proposed in the document. But uh, we, I don't think we have a way to, to discuss all those details here because the time is short. But I would like just to call your attention to that document. CASA uh, can give us a, perhaps a, a very concise executive summary of the three approaches. Uh, and uh, we can consider it as a, a very strong contribution to this discussion. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Carlos. Uh, Rudolf Grindel's next. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Carlos, your, your microphone is still on. Uh, um. Okay. Hello. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. My name is Rudolf Griedel. I'm head of the Internet Governance Section and coordinator for internet governance policy in the German government in the Ministry for Economic Affairs. I'm a former MAG member from 2018 to 2020. 
And I have been, uh, together with my colleagues, the organizer of the IGF 2019 in Germany and one of the co-authors of the already mentioned options paper regarding recommendations 5A and B. Um, thank you very much, Yuping, for the presentation. And thank you also, um, everybody who has uh, contributed to this to this um, endeavor. Um, and you think you mentioned it, but I want, to, I want to bring it up again. We have on the table a ton of multi-stakeholder consultations already. In the run-up to our options paper, we have had multi-stakeholder consultations regionally in Latin America, in Africa, in Europe, um, and we had it globally with a citizen's dialogue. Um, there have been other consultations, um, and more particularly what Car Carlos also referred to and Titi before, we have the excellent paper of the MAG Working Group on uh, Strategy. And I really think that this is now the time to take action and not to consult again. Or, let me put it, with a good philosopher, um, Elvis Presley, who had this song, a little less conversation, a little more action. I think that is what we all need now. And um, I, I see where you are coming from, Yuping. And I see that it is, that now that the tech envoy has taken the office or that the office is established, you, you, you want to base your decisions on like a broad basis. But I think there is a broad basis already that you can draw from. I'm not sure if you really need to prolong the process. Um, so that's my first message. Rather taking action than taking another consultation. Um, my second um, message would be, um, I think it is very important now that the Office of the Tech Envoy is established to um, put a clear scene where does the Tech Envoy stand. And you had a very valuable contribution, Yu Ping, when you say the Tech Envoy is the one in charge of the implementation of the roadmap. I think that's very important for all of us to hear it from you because um, somebody uh, asked me the other day, so what is this task? Is he the new MAG chair? Is he the new uh, IGF boss? No, it's not. And I think that's very important to, to, to communicate this. And, um, and uh, in this context, um, we also have to see this new multi-stakeholder high-level body, um, which, um, which has to find its role, that's clear, but which should be in our view. And I think that's the message that we got in our consultations. It should be the body to, have, to do the linkage between discussion and decision. Discussions at the IGF, decision makers elsewhere in the business, in the, in the international organization, in the government. And I think if you work on these parameters and um, on the basis of what the MAC has already elaborated, I think it's good it's a good basis where you could start off right now without having another round and another round and another round of consultation. Thank you very much for your intention, attention. That's what I have to contribute. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Rudolf. Um, I'd just like to remind people that um, we're giving four minutes to each person. I mean, we can switch it to five and that would be good. I would also like to also to um, ask that respondents can also look at the questions and um, see if they can answer any of them um, in their response, such as the uh, structure um, uh, funding as well, which is also very important. And um, and also how will it be, what will be the composition of the body? Um, so those are the questions that we have there in the um, slide uh, questions to consider. Okay, so with that, um, Livia, please. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Cheng Etai. And um, following up on, on Titi's remarks earlier and also on what uh, Carlos uh, uh, just said, I can actually gladly present briefly um, the ideas of our working group on, on IGF strategy on how to um, operationalize uh, this strategic and empowered uh, multi-stakeholder high-level body, as it is uh, envisaged in, in paragraph 93a of the UNSG's um, roadmap. And of course, time is short, um, so I cannot outline the three approaches um, that we developed in detail, but I also already um, posted the link to the document in the chat, um, so you can uh, consult it there as well. Um, also, I would like to mention that um, while developing these ideas, our working group took into account uh, the discussions on the multi-stakeholder high-level body that have been taking place uh, at different occasions, particularly also um, the roundtable consultations led by uh, Germany and the UAE um, between fall 2019 and summer 2020, which then uh, culminated in, uh, in their options paper for implementing recommendation uh, 5A and B of the high-level uh, panel's recommendation. And um, in fact, on many aspects of the multi-stakeholder high-level body, such as um, the functions, the governance, appointment and, and composition, there was actually broad agreement among the working group members. And in this sense, uh, the three approaches, A, B and C, really share some, some key characteristics. And first of all, um, the approaches uh, envisage the same purpose of the multi-stakeholder high-level body, which is namely a higher um, visibility and greater political relevance um, for, for the IGF. Um, um, also, uh, the uh, functions are basically identical in the three approaches, um, building on the ones um, envisaged in, in paragraph 93.8. Uh, and also the main function uh, would actually be um, to build stronger bridges between the discussions and insights of uh, experts at the IGF and decisions being made in um, other fora. I think Rudolf also said that very clearly before. And um, also all three options, um, uh, in all three options, the multi-stakeholder high-level body is seen as an integral part um, of the IGF uh, architecture. And also all approaches are multi-stakeholder and built on the um, experience of the MAC. And then um, finally, the profile of its members and, and their um, system of nomination, namely bottom-up and rotating, um, is very similar in all of them. So um, what's actually different in the, in the three uh, approaches that we developed? Um, the working group sees different options on how the relationship between the multi-stakeholder high-level body and the existing IGF MAC um, could look like. And their um, approach A sees uh, the multi-stakeholder high-level body as, um, as separate but complementary to the MAC. Um, it argues that different uh, functions require uh, distinct profiles and therefore um, two bodies would be, would be needed. Um, the multi-stakeholder high-level body um, would consist um, of about 25 high-level members from all stakeholder groups. And the multi-stakeholder high-level body and the MAC would have very strong links by using um, the respective chairs um, of each other's uh, body. Also, there would be um, equality and no hierarchy between them. Then um, on approach B, um, there um, approach B suggests a so-called a MAC plus uh, approach, namely an uh, in-depth reform of the current MAC. So there would not be a new body um, per se, but within the MAC, um, a leadership consisting of five to six people. And the composition of the MAC would stay the same uh, with 40 to 50 people. And the chair of the leadership team would also be um, the chair of the MAC. And then finally, um, approach C suggests uh, a two-tiered multi-stakeholder IGF uh, leadership, uh, leadership structure. And it actually draws on elements of both um, option A and B and proposes uh, to establish a single structure that consists of the multi-stakeholder high-level body and the current MAC. And then the multi-stakeholder high-level body would be empowered um, to provide strategic leadership and more um, senior representation, while the MAG would continue to focus on, on the um, annual IGF uh, process. Yes, um, to close, I think it's really fair to say that uh, the working group on strategy did some really profound work 
by developing these ideas um, on how to operationalize the multi-stakeholder high-level body. And yeah, as I said, there was really broad agreement on many aspects of this multi-stakeholder high-level body um, among the um, members of the working group. And um, yeah, uh, the work working group sent these three options to the co-champions of recommendation uh, five A and B back in September last year. And we really hope that um, they will be taken into account uh, in the next steps uh, on the implementation of the multi-stakeholder high-level body. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Livia, and really thank you for that recap of the, the three options in the paper. I think as we've emphasized, we are aware that there have been many consultations that have gone on. And we hear you, Rudolph, and the other colleagues in the chat when you say that really there has been a lot of discussion that the time for action is now. And I think this is part of the spirit in which um, this final question, this questionnaire will allow us to sort of conclude and wrap up and make sure that we have consulted with everyone else beyond this very engaged community and give an opportunity to those that we have not heard from this chance to really input their views so that there can be this considered proposal that goes to the Secretary General for his consideration and then his action. So I do hear all colleagues when they have emphasized that there has been much reflection, much thought and much work that's gone into the proposals in the MAG's three options that in the previous options paper produced by Germany and the UAE and really in the consultation process that has led up led us to this very point. And so just to reassure all colleagues that I do believe it is the intention of the Secretary to move forward on this and I would also defer and ask uh, my DESA colleagues in Chenga Thai to perhaps explain a little bit more on the timeline for the questionnaire and what are the foreseen next steps for that. But just again, to make clear that we are very much aware of all that has gone on and that we really do want to reflect all the important work that's been building on one after another across the last two years in terms of taking us to this point. Thank you so much. And um, can I now call on, call on Chris Painter? Yes, hi. Um... First of all, uh, on these prior comments, I've also participated in that consultation, so certainly welcome that. Uh, the point I want to make about this multi-stakeholder body is that as much as we all care about these issues, and we all do, uh, we are a small subset of the world community, and it's not getting the attention I think it deserves. It's not getting the mainstream attention it does. And I'm speaking both on my personal capacity as president of the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise Foundation. So we need to make this more of a political priority around the world and get some of those stakeholders involved. Uh, one thing I think the ITU lacks, and frankly, a lot of the IGFs in the past have lacked, is they've attracted, even from government, more of the ICT ministers, who are lovely people, but they only cover one part of this uh, portfolio. And a question for this, this multi-stakeholder body is, how can you involve, on the government side, foreign ministers, uh, interior ministers, people who deal with other aspects of cyberspace that I think have getting more attention to the IGF, but we don't have the stakeholders there. And that's not just on the government side, but it's on the other side too. So I think a key part of this is to, um, is to broaden uh, the participants in the IGF as we broaden the mandate of different subjects that it's been dealing with. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Chris. Um, next on the speaking queue is uh, Paul Blaker. Thank you, Chen. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Paul Blaker. I'm speaking for the UK government. And thank you for putting together this session. We welcome the consultation on paragraph 93A. This will be the first specific consultation on the proposal for a high level body. And we think it is important to consult fully on this because it's a very significant proposal with major consequences for the IGF and the IGF community. The UK has warmly welcomed the Secretary General's roadmap as a significant and positive step forward. And it's good that there is so much consensus about what we need to do to strengthen the IGF. Much of it set out in the roadmap. We hope this can move forward as quickly as possible. But there has been a lot of concern among stakeholders about the idea of establishing a high level body. And the UK government would not support a high level body as a separate new body. 
I think we all agree that the IGF needs stronger leadership, but we are worried that if this body is set up separately to the IGF and separately to the MAG, it could actually undermine the IGF. There is a risk that a separate body of high profile individuals will take attention away from the IGF itself and undermine the real work it has to do. There's a risk that a new body would not be accountable to the IGF community. It would not have ownership or responsibility for strengthening the IGF. And appointing a group of high profile individuals would not be in keeping with the bottom up multi stakeholder ethos of the IGF. There's also a risk that the role of the high level body would overlap with the role of the MAG which could lead to confusion and even rivalry, as well as new bureaucracy and new costs. So we are all agreed the IGF needs stronger leadership, stronger corporate identity, and a more strategic approach. And I think many people would agree that the current setup of the MAG means that it is not well placed to do that. So in the MAG working group, we have developed an alternative approach where the new high level body sits within the MAG as part of the MAG. It would be a kind of executive committee of the MAG or a multi-stakeholder leadership team of the MAG, perhaps made up of one senior person from each stakeholder group plus the IGF chair. It would provide senior representation it would strengthen links with decision-making organizations, and it would provide strategic leadership to develop and help implement an IGF plus. And crucially, it would be accountable to the wider MAG and part of the wider community. Making it part of the MAG would also make sure that our efforts and resources are joined up and we are all pulling in the same direction. Finally, I'd finish just by saying that this is not a discussion about aims and objectives. There is a lot of consensus on what we all want to achieve together, but the issue is how to achieve it. And in our view, making the high level body part of a reformed and strengthened MAG will provide the joined up senior strategic leadership that we need. Thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Paul, and thank you also for um, keeping in time. Uh, that was very good and much appreciated. Um, sorry, if I can just come in on this point, I think just because Paul has made some really important points that I just really want to, again, go on record to say, I mean, we have made this point quite clear over a number of months that we, at the Secretariat and, it's, and in the drafting of the roadmap, perhaps it didn't seem that clear, but it has never been envisioned that what this roadmap says about 93A is for the high level body to be separate from the IGF. I do think that this is part of the structure of the IGF and that was why it was situated within the paragraph on IGF strengthening. So the high level body in whatever form it eventually takes is not foreseen as a separate body from the IGF. And as laid out in the options of the options paper and the MAG that the MAG had put forward in response to the roadmap is foreseen as part of the IGF structure itself and providing, as you said, the high level leadership and strategic um, guidance for taking forward the IGF. So just to reassure everybody on that score that the high level body as envisioned by the Secretary General and the Secretariat at this point, not that any decision has been made about how it will be constituted, in no formal way would there be the option whereby it is separate from the IGF, detracting from the IGF or becoming something that is not part of the IGF structure and community itself. And that I think is something that I really want to make sure that everybody feels comfortable about and that really there should not be any concerns to that end. Thank you. Sorry, back to you, Cheng. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I foresee us running out of time. So um, if we could um, just make our interventions um, uh, as short as possible and to the point. And also, yes, I mean, we're here to listen. And um, so uh, please, um, Paula Martins. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yuping. Thank you, Shengetai. Um, I'm Paula Martins. I'm here on behalf of the Association for Progressive Communications. 
Um, APC believes that an empowered high-level leadership body that could ensure a more outcome-oriented process, building on a stronger thematic focus during the sessions, and enhanced uh, intersessional work, sending clear messages to inform and feed other internet policy and internet governance processes would be indeed a, a, an important development. This body could uh, better bridge the gap between deliberative spaces and decision-making processes, as well as strengthen the participation of different stakeholders, including governments from the global, from the global south, for example. Um, that said, we worry about the format, composition, and attributions to be defined to such a body. It is key to ensure that the experience and lessons learned from years of IGF and MAG operation really fit into this process of strengthening leadership in digital cooperation and key principles like multi-stakeholderism, transparency, inclusivity, dialogue are key aspects that we really need, feel that should be safeguarded. We believe there's a risk uh, with the creation of a new structure uh, of creating a top-down approach to digital cooperation that could undermine the IGF's legacy if not carefully designed. It is important to ensure that the new body will not be disconnected from the IGF community as was just discussed and also from other institutions and processes of the internet governance ecosystem. Therefore, we believe that extensive multi-stakeholder discussions should guide any developments. Uh, we urge you to create, in addition to the questionnaire, other spaces specifically to discuss the proposed multi-stakeholder high-level body with enough time and publicization to allow a broad and more meaningful participation at this point with clarification of next steps. So we really look forward to continuing to engage in this de debate. And uh, we consider that the response document that was just presented to the options paper that was prepared by the MAC strategy working group, uh, it's a very valuable starting point for further consultations and conversations in this regard. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Paula. Uh, Yuping? Um, thank you so much. Um, the next colleague who is on the speaker's list, hold on a second. Oh, sorry, uh, my fault. Um, is, I believe it's Ben Wallace. Hello, thank you. Uh, ben Wallace, uh, representing Microsoft. Um, so paragraph 93A is obviously at quite a high level, but it does set out three tasks. And the one that I'd like to emphasize is that of relaying the IGS policy recommendations to decision-making bodies. Uh, I think this is um, important both for making better use of the IGF's many outputs uh, and also for raising the profile of the IGF. It's something that the, the Secretariat and the MAG have had limited resources. I think it's something that can fall through the cracks. So I think having this as a dedicated and thought through um, task done by um, senior people is, is a welcome um, addition. And I think that tells us something about what the, the profile of the members of a, of a high level board should be. Uh, I'm concerned at suggestions um, that, that we need to be looking for ministers and CEOs I'd actually prefer to see people who can roll their sleeves up um, and, and do the work themselves. People who um, already have contacts and involvement in these decision-making bodies that they'll be reaching out to. So I'd be thinking of a profile of, of senior government officials uh, and senior representatives and executives who have experience operating within these decision-making bodies. Um, the, the only other point I want to make now is I do share some of the concerns that Paul Blaker raised about the potential for competition or duplication with the MAG. Uh, I, I think his proposal for um, kind of a senior strategic tier um, for the MAG uh, is very interesting, if, if I understood it correctly. Um, I don't want to mischaracterize it. Um, and I think it's worth exploring that in more detail. But if there is to be um, a body that's separate from the MAG, I think at the very least, um, it's important to have overlapping leadership to help avoid um, duplication or lack of coordination. So 
the, the chair of this new body would need to be a vice chair of the MAG and the chair of the MAG should be a vice chair of the new body to kind of ensure that coordination. And I'll leave it there, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ben. Um, next is Jorge. Uh, please, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Chengetai. I'll try to be brief and try to stick to, to your questions. Um, regarding, uh, well, this is Jorge Gancia with government again. Uh, regarding the, the functions, I think that uh, the proposals uh, from the UN Secretary General are very opposite. I think that uh, those functions have been uh, detailed uh, very, um, very specifically also by the MAC working group. So I think we have a good basis there on uh, what the, fun the functions should be. Um, the functions lead us uh, from the Swiss government to thinking that uh, they are separate and different to the program development function from the MAC. That is why we think a separate but equal body within the IGF makes more sense because the profile of the people is different. Uh, in the program development function of the MAC, you need expert people in uh, uh, bridge building function between expert discussions and decision-making processes, you need high-level people. So this calls for us logically for separate and distinct uh, bodies within the IGF. Um, as to the governance and structure, we agree with the point of uh, aligning with the experience had in the past years uh, in the MAC. So we would have basically the same bottom-up nomination process from all stakeholder groups, probably with a more reduced number of people, about 20, uh, 25, and uh, being completely accountable and transparent to the multi-stakeholder community, so as the MAG is but uh, as said, with uh, different functions and profiles than the MAC. And uh, as to how to serve uh, this uh, uh, structure within the IGF, we think that the logical uh, choice, uh, which is also supported by all the approaches of the MAC working group is that this should be for the IGF secretariat. And uh, of course, the IGF trust fund should be the source of funding. And uh, for sure, Switzerland is uh, there to support uh, this if it goes forward. We think this is a very timely uh, consultation, but it's uh, as Rudolf from Germany said, uh, and many supported on the chat, it is really time for action. We link on the three approaches uh, put forward by the MAC working group and uh, seeing what is the, the best combination of them. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Jorge. Um, I'm closing the list for now. So the last person is um, Giacomo Mozeni. Uh, sorry. Uh, so Giacomo, you're the last person. Um, so the next person is? Uh, Justin, Faye, please. Sure. And uh, good morning again, everyone. And um, again, my name is Justin Fair, and I'm speaking this morning on behalf of the government of the United States. Um, so for, for 16 years, the IGF has uh, served as an open forum for a global discussion on internet policy issues. And it's a unique annual event that is hosted by the United Nations, but is driven by the multi-stakeholder community. Uh, its program is created from the bottom up, not the top down and its functions as a platform for developing partnerships, discussions, and debate to fuel policy innovations. Uh, we believe that the, the IGF has evolved and improved over the years in large part because of these characteristics, which are critical um, that it retain. 
Um, for these reasons, uh, the United States was very pleased that the Roadmap on Digital Cooperation recognized the centrality and importance of the IGF in the work of the UN system towards better coordination on digital technology related issues. Uh, and particularly as we implement many of the, the very positive recommendations that are in the roadmap, um, which we, we mostly support. Um, but in this vein, we must be clear that the United States uh, strongly opposes a new body like the one that is described in the roadmap that would presumably be empowered to translate and prioritize the discussions at the IGF um, in a multi-stakeholder setting into policy recommendations for intergovernmental or normative bodies to make a decision on. In our view, such a body would undermine the multi-stakeholder policy discussions at the IGF that we have long um, supported and defended. Um, further, we, we also agree with some others that have mentioned that such a body could risk downgrading the importance of the IGF, uh, particularly within the UN system. Uh, at the same time, as per our longstanding position, the United States is open to proposals that improve and strengthen the IGF and the MAG. Um, as such, we would support elevating the level of participation in the MAG and, and or organizing the MAG in a way that provides for better outward messaging of the, I, uh, of the IGF's valuable policy discussions. Uh, not so the IGF feeds recommendations into intergovernmental bodies, uh, but instead to ensure that the IGF remains the premier global forum uh, for multi-stakeholder dialogue on internet, uh, public policy related issues. Uh, thanks. Thank you so much, um, Justin. And I do think um, some of the concerns I think you had raised is precisely what I had addressed with Paul, where I really do think that we are moving away from this. We have never had this idea that the the high level body would be separate from the IGF. It would be a necessary part of the IGF structure. And so I think a lot of the issues that colleagues have raised today, how do we best ensure that it does not detract from the MAG? It builds on the work of the MAG. It synthesizes, or it really, as you just said, raises and elevates some of the discussions at the MAG to a higher level such that decisions can be taken to precisely achieve the outcomes that you just spoke about. This idea of transmitting the key discussions at the IGF itself to other parts, other international fora, such that there can be, in some ways, I think, follow up or outcomes from what happens at the IGF and have greater resonance elsewhere. So I think some of those key issues are what we need to discuss and where we really are interested in hearing the views of all member states, as well as stakeholders as to how we achieve that. And so again, I do really want to reassure all colleagues that we're not looking at replacing the MAG. We are looking at, in some ways, precisely what you said, to really support the multi-stakeholder approach that's been taken at the IGF. And so I believe the Secretary General's proposal in the roadmap for a multi-stakeholder high-level body is precisely to preserve this multi-stakeholder nature of the IGF that we all do enshrine and believe in quite firmly. So again, just to reassure our colleagues that I do think that there has been some certain sort of misconceptions about the high level body, but that in discussing it now, whatever we can clarify to really get rid of some of these misperceptions and how we can move forward indeed in building this very constructive relationship between the proposed high level body and the MAG itself so that we can ultimately achieve what you had just outlined as our shared goal, making sure that the IGF remains the premier internet governance body forum for these discussions and for where these kinds of discussions can take place. So the next speaker on the list I have is Timia. Timia, please. Thank you, Yuping, and thank you for giving me the floor for the second time. This is Timia Shittu speaking on behalf of the um, ICC basis. As I noted before, um, we can see some potential value in creating a high level body to strengthen the IGF. Um, and to add weight and visibility to the IGF's work and provide a place for some strategic discussions about the role and activities of the IGF, especially as we are moving towards um, the IGF+. Plus. Uh, also, as I noted before, we have been actively engaged with the IGF Strategy Working Group to share some of our views um, on um, also on the multi-stakeholder high-level body, among other issues. And in that group, we have already expressed our support to uh, options um, B or option C, um, as presented by Livia before. So in the interest of time, I will not go through all the points of our thinking in supporting either of those options. I would only like to underline here that the basis of our engagement and support um, is the belief that any such body should be set up in a way that fits organically within the IGF, uh, is in accordance with the IGF's open bottom-up 
multi-stakeholder nature and ensures coordination with other parts of the broader internet governance ecosystem, particularly with um, uh, the MAG, the Office of the Tech Envoy and the Sector General. It will be important that the work of the high-level body um, is closely integrated and coordinated with the work of the IGF multi-stakeholder advisory group, so the MAG, um, with clearly defined and distinct roles, just as Paul mentioned before. Um, so uh, the way we see it, um, such a multi-stakeholder advisory body, high-level body, uh, will need to be very closely uh, aligned and working together with the MAG. Um, on the more specific considerations on the high-level body um, and the questions that are on the screen here, I would like to quote um, our friend Jovan Kurbalia, who always reminds us that form follows function. So therefore, my question is, um, are we to assume that the role of the multi-stakeholder high-level body will be as expressed in the roadmap paragraph 93C um, that foresees three specific functions? Um, and if we are to assume that this will be the mandate um, of the body, then the composition and the profile of members need to follow from that mandate, with specific attention paid to the time and level of engagement expected from the members of the high-level body, just as, men um, just as Ben mentioned before. And the mandate will also uh, determine, I think, the level of support needed, both in terms of uh, support staff and budget. So last but not least, because we're running out of time, I just want to thank the IGF, DESA, and the Office of the Tech Envoy for this consultation. It is very welcome that we can discuss on this specific point directly. Um, and I thank you for this openness. My question, and perhaps you, Ping or Chengita, you can address this, um, is the next steps. Um, so after the input is collected here um, and from the questionnaire and taken into consideration the input of the um, IGF working group on strategy and strengthening, what is going to happen after? Will the community be allowed to look um, through the, the results of this consultation and the proposal? Will we have the opportunity to comment further um, on the outcomes of this consultation? Um, and how is uh, how are the next steps envisioned? That would be very helpful to, um, to have some clarity on that. So thank you again, and my apologies for going slightly over my allocated time. Uh, thank you, Timia. Um, as far as the input is concerned, um, all the input that we're going to receive, we are going to publish on the IGF website. So it's completely transparent. Everybody knows um, um, who said what and um, what the general feeling is of the community. Um, a report is going to be rewritten, and um, and you pink can correct me if I'm wrong. And the report is going to be written and um, submitted to the office of the secretary general. Um, as well, um, I'd just like to point out that as, as well, you know, we would like to do what everything that uh, is recommended or that stakeholders are, uh, recommend, but of course, um, there's budgetary constraints. Etc. Um, as far as another consultation goes, I don't know. I mean, of the results of this, I don't know because it seems to me that there may be a little bit of consultation fatigue that is happening. Um, so, I mean, that is an open question and that is something to consider. And thank you for um, bringing it up and we will discuss it and, um, and see where that goes. So with that, Unless Yuping wants to jump in, I'll give the floor to Paul Charlton. I mean, just very quickly, I think, again, from our perspective, we have heard many consultations. So when we say, you know, the inputs that we all get today, I think the goal, at least from our officer's perspective, is to really try and see whether there can be something concrete that is put up in terms of next steps, as opposed to sort of a summary of the consultations that have which we assume would essentially be repeating sort of the consultation process that we've been having for the last two years. So the goal really is to see whether there can be some kind of action oriented proposal that comes from this. And if at the end of the day, I mean, I'll be very frank with all of you, if the colleagues and member states feel that there and stakeholders feel that there is no need to sort of change what has been going on, then that will be the prerogative of the stakeholders around the table. So I think your views would be important in sort of saying, this is what we think should happen. And if the consensus is that nothing should happen and we should proceed as how we have for the last few years, then that will be the message that we will put to the Secretary General as this is the view of the stakeholders in the member states. So I think this is where in some ways, the call for action is also the call to take a decision. This is where in some ways the rubble hit the road. So if there is a view that nothing needs to be changed or that small changes have to be made, 
then that is the view of the community and that is the proposal and recommendation that will go to the second general for its decision. Or we, and this is where I really ask for colleagues to really sort of think about what has transpired over the last two years and see whether there can be a point at which we agree that even if we make changes and we recognize that not all changes are perfect now, there can at least be a start in a direction where we want to evolve the IGF. Thank you. Yes, and that and that is also why we're asking these specific questions because they are action-oriented questions that we can derive some form of action from, from it. So it's not an open-ended um, consultation. These are very specific questions which you can derive very specific action-oriented outcomes from, uh, or at least that's what we think. But uh, without further ado, uh, please, Paul. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, uh, Shegatai and, uh, uh, and uh, colleagues, um, and I hope you can, uh, you can hear me. Um, I'm just, uh, I just wanted to uh, build on some things that other people have, have said um, uh, in earlier comments. First of all, I think we have to, to make a distinction in the, in the recommendations under section 93. Uh, recommendations B through G, I think have wide support and, and consensus on things like uh, focusing the agenda more, uh, improving funding, long-term sustainability, improving the participation of certain types of, of stakeholders. So I, I think we, we, are, we are already making progress on many of those recommendations and we can go full steam ahead. However, with recommendation uh, 93A, it's, it's very different. As has been pointed out before, we, we, we really haven't had a lot of discussion um, uh, in the broad community about this recommendation. Um, we would very strongly support the, the position and the comments from Paul Blaker of the UK and others um, who have cautioned that there, there is a real danger if we get this wrong, that we could actually harm the IGF. Uh, we could possibly uh, undermine it. Uh, and so that's a reason for great caution. Uh, we support, um, uh, in terms of having any sort of um, uh, improvement in the governance of the IGF, we would support uh, the, the MAG plus model, basically improving the MAG, much in the same spirit of the, uh, uh, of the proposals overall in the high level report and the roadmap about the IGF, which don't try to create a new body, but, but instead improve the IGF through an IGF plus model. We think having a MAG plus model makes more sense than creating a separate uh, governance body, which even though it may well be uh, inside the IGF, will still be separate from the MAG and raise the, the risk of duplication um, and, and other problems. So we would, we would urge that uh, to be the basis of our discussions going forward to strengthen the MAG and not create a, a separate body. But we do need to discuss this issue uh, because as much as we, we may have consultation fatigue in some areas, um, uh, really this is something that needs to be discussed uh, much further. I would also, if I could add, uh, uh, make a renewed plea for more information regarding the Office of the Czech Envoy and the mandate uh, I think there was a reference by the, the uh, Assistant Secretary General in her remarks earlier about there being um, a document that, that provided the mandate that was circulated somewhere in the UN, but I don't think we've seen that document. So I would ask that it be uh, circulated again to, to all UN members so we have uh, the utmost transparency uh, and clarity um, about the uh, Office of the Tech Envoy. I think that would be very helpful and, and assist with all of our discussions. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Paul. Um, we are basically out of time. So what I'm going to do now is that we'll just do um, the speakers one after the, after the other. Please um, stay in time. If you're not in time, I will stop you and go to the next one. So um, we're going to have Estev, Courtney, Rev. Radish, um, Lynn Santamol, hi Lynn, and um, Roman, one after the other. Okay. Thank you. So, Estev, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Shangadai. I hope you can hear me well. Um, this is Esteva Sanz. I'm the head of the internet governance sector in the European Commission, and I'm, I'm representing the European Commission. Uh, thanks again for, for uh, this consultation. Um, uh, sorry. I'm going to start my video. Hope you can see me now. Can you hear me? 
Yes, we can. Okay. So very quickly, um, well, let me let me start though by mentioning that the Commission is actually very happy with the consensus created around the, the roadmap for digital cooperation, and also in particular to what concerns 5A and 5B recommendations. We, as it is well known, we would like a more strategic, more focused, more ambitious IGF, uh, and this is basically the IGF plus that is mentioned in this document and that we all have in mind. Uh, we think that the multi-stakeholder uh, high-level body should be an instrument to reinforce this consensus and contribute to those general lines of actions rather than an end in itself. To that end, we've contributed to the discussions in the MAC uh, strategy working group, and we would, of course, invite uh, all decision makers, UNSG, et cetera, to consider the options presented in the, in the document prepared by the group. Uh, these options, though, reflect some legitimate concerns around the creation of a multi-stakeholder high-level body these concerns need to be taken into account. And uh, some of them, we've heard them already uh, by many different people. So this needs to be taken into account, but we believe that there is a relatively easy way out of those concerns. And the way out is probably to take a closer look on what would be the functions of the multi-stakeholder high-level body. And rather than taking the spotlight, we think the multi-stakeholder high-level body could be in charge of bringing to the IGF plus table the big internet governance decision makers to openly and democratically discuss their policies and policy ideas with the global multi-stakeholder community. And here we are thinking about big states, big regions such as the European Union, but also big internet companies from around the globe who take local decisions about the internet, but that nonetheless have a global impact. In our view, that should be the central function of the body we in the EU acknowledge that big players need a clear global platform to discuss very relevant policies, such as the Digital Services, is Services Act in our case. And at the same time, I think that everybody agrees that the IGF would benefit enormously from such level of dialogue. After agreeing on such more concrete definition of the function of the mostly high level body, then the relation with the MAC can be revisited in the light of the MAC working group options paper. But bearing in mind that the MAC should continue being in charge of guaranteeing the bottom-up multi-stakeholder nature of the IGF, the MAC in any case should remain in charge of preparing the agenda based in the input of the community and organizing the work of the IGF in general, including the intersessional work, uh, work streams, relation with uh, regional bodies and initiatives, etc. while the new body takes care of bringing high-level internet decision makers to openly discuss their policy ideas with the multi-stakeholder community. We think that this function uh, needs to be concretized so that we can move forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Courtney? Hello, hi, thank you. Um, yeah, just a couple of thoughts um, coming, you know, relatively new to this process as a new MAG member. Um, this is for the first time I've participated in this consultation, but I think a couple of things stand out. One is that the function that is laid out in, uh, in 93A does not, does not seem to match um, the, the profile of the people that they're thinking about bringing in. And I would go to the point that form will impact function and vice versa. So if we're looking at, I think uh, Chris Painter said earlier, you know, people who are gonna bring the visibility needed to the IGF and, and the issues being discussed there and the outcomes being created, then you know, we do need to think about how to get higher level participants because they will be, for example, media generators. We talked about the importance of increasing um, coverage by news media, for example, um, and that will help them then take those into the fora where they're active. But I think that that is at odds with kind of the work that is considered um, to be needed by those by those um, high level, you know, members of the panel. So I think that, you know, rethinking that to focus on kind of the communications role and the visibility role might be helpful. Um, to that end, I think also that the um, you know, that that could be then more explicitly mentioned, perhaps. And so if they want to focus on
Uh, Courtney, you're suddenly muted for some reason. Um, of the, can you? Hello? Yes, we can hear you now. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I'm just wondering whether, you know, part of the responsibility of the MAG and how members are selected for the MAG could also have to do with that. Um, you know, just thinking that, you know, you have the expert level people who are involved in the MAG and those are the ones who are likely going to be in other decision-making fora, not at the governmental level, but, you know, in, in other fora. So then it also, um, I was also wondering whether, you know, it, the, the issues around diminishing the competition um, with the MAG, I think is really important and what this um, entity is called and where it is embedded, despite the fact that, you know, everyone might be agreed that they don't want it to be competitive or that they don't want it to undermine the MAG, it will, you know, how it is, how it is formed, what it is called and where it sits will nonetheless have that impact. So I would reiterate, I think some of the comments that Paul from the UK made about needing to, you know, maintain the centrality and um, influence of the MAG. And so probably thinking about embedding this within uh, the MAG would be uh, important. So thank you. Uh, thank you, Courtney. Uh, Lynn Santamo. Thank you, Changatai. Um, I'll try and be really brief, but I would like to just bring up one or two, hopefully newer points. Um, first, I'd like to say though that I strongly support Paul Blaker's um, comments and his clear desires for a stronger and more empowered MAG and IGF. And that's something obviously the community has been working to since its very, very earliest days. I also agree with his concerns. Um, if you look back at the original intent for the IGF from the Tunis agenda, most of the functions that are proposed through this um, MLHB is in the Tunis agenda. And in fact, the MAG had, as it was established, the MAG and the IGF community had actually tried to meet a lot of those functions. I think one of the things that happened is over time, the IGF annual meeting grew, all the intersectional activities grew, and the MAG became more of a program committee or a, or a you know, management body, if you will. And I think that was primarily because we didn't have the resources to scale to meet those activities, either with respect to support for the activities themselves, BPFs and DCs, and importantly, all the national and regional IGF initiatives, but also the secretariat. So one of the things I worry about is if you, it's easy to get caught up in the details. And if we had to, I would support B or C. Um, I do agree a consultation is necessary. And while it is really easy to get caught up in the details, if you step back and you look directionally at what we're doing, we're actually moving to a multi, a high level body, theoretically composed of ministers and CEOs and not out to the community. Not, if you wanna look at an amplifier for our messages and our work, it's through the National and Regional IGF initiatives and a number of other community efforts. Internet Society chapters is another. There are so many multi-stakeholder bodies and activities we could work with that would have, help amplify the messages where the, where the act, activities and action is actually going to happen and be implemented. I, I really worry that we're, we're really centralizing and reverting back to old models that some people are quite comfortable with. And I've worked a lot with the World Economic Forum as well for 10, 12 years and chair of various of their bodies. So I know how they work and how those sorts of bodies work. And I know how the multi-stakeholder bodies work. And I, and I really would ask everybody to think about the functions we're trying to meet through this high level body and whether or not that couldn't be done by leaning more into the multi-stakeholder body and into the national and regional IGF initiatives. I, I really think directionally it's the wrong, the wrong way. Um, so I think I'll just stop there. Um, but I really appreciate the, the efforts for this kind of consultation and do think we need more time on this. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Uh, Roman? Hello, can I be heard? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, this is Roman Chukov from the Russian Federation. I represent the governmental stakeholder group. And I would like to make my habitual point about the fact that we need uh, to be action oriented. And uh, we would not like to have another consultative uh, body just to give another sort of advice, to seek for another support, 
for some policy uh, recommendations uh, producing and so on and so forth. Last year, we already uh, heard the Secretary General who said that he wants the IGF to be more policy oriented. And uh, it shouldn't uh, mean that uh, we should um, make it a torch relay between different new offices or old offices who will be taking responsibility over the, uh, over the IGF. We want uh, to follow the Tunis agenda uh, for the already established mandate of the IGF to work with the stakeholders, with the policies, to uh, compare and elaborate norms, to make sure that people on the ground uh, understand why IGF exists how stakeholders coordinate their vision, how they uh, make the global norm uh, regulations, and how do they actually facilitate the global digital cooperation and internet governance. This is the mandate and nothing has changed. So uh, we are, here I'm reflecting the Russia's official position, we are uh, for practic practical orientation of the IGF, should it be through MAG or through high level body, it uh, right now doesn't matter, but it should the mandate shouldn't be forgotten and uh, action should be prioritized, especially in terms of real uh, digital uh, uh, framework for cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. Thank you, Roman. Uh, uh, last person is Giacomo, and then we can yes, have closing sorry. remarks from you, Yuping. Just very quickly, I just want to say that, again, the whole process of consultation from the high-level panel on no, is such no, no, that- uh, uh, Yuping, sorry, sorry. One more person and then you can oh, have sorry. closing remarks. Okay. Sure, no problem. Yeah, one more person, then you can have closing remarks. Okay, Giacomo. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, as many of you know, I have followed the MAG work since the very beginning, 16 years ago. I have uh, participated to all the meetings still now. And uh, believe me, my feeling is after all this experience is that one of the strengths of the MAC is also its weakness. The strength is that every three years people change, every, one year, every year new people arrive with new ideas representing and reflect new worlds and new priorities, et cetera, et cetera. And the, the people with more experience leave and others arrive, et cetera, et cetera. This is good because you can intercept bottom up all the things that comes from the reality around you. But what is bad is that you lose the continuity and despite the secretariat's work in order, or the chair work trying to, uh, to compact all this, then we have a high risk that a lot of things are lost. So the idea of the high level body, if we respect all the um, fears and uh, doubts that Lynn, Paul and others have expressed, because of course we are all here to, to, to get the better out of the IGF. If we, we simply need to um, streamline exactly what we expect from one body and what we expect from the other, how they can work together in not to be more effective. One, intercepting the bottom-up reality and the other one, bridging with the reality in order to make effective the policy recommendation and the policy activity that the MAC want to structure. That's my opinion. I don't see any contradiction. That's the message. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Giacomo. And before I give you Ping the last word, I'm just going to say that um, so we will be publishing the survey on the IGF website and it is going to be distributed to missions as uh, the Assistant Secretary General has said. Uh, we hopefully will be able to do that um, before the end of this week. If not, it's going to be the very first thing. Um, next week and we intend to give about two weeks for people to bring in their um, suggestions um, on this. Um, so um, and um, so that's it. And just remember, we have the social event straight after this. Um, so with that, I give the floor to Yuping. Thanks. Thank you so much, Shangatai. And thank you so much for everybody for participating today. I think my end message is really that we are listening and that even though the consultation process that we as part of our office had led as part of the high-level panel process and the roadmap had given us the impression that there was that consensus around the IGF plus and perhaps some extent towards a high-level body. We are happy to look at what are the views expressed and really take forward in a constructive way in partnership with all of you, the best way that we can collectively strengthen the IGF. I do think Paul is right in that there is already clear consensus on a lot of the aspects of 
paragraph 93, and really those are the areas where we need to make progress. When it comes to the high level body, perhaps, and as colleagues have already stressed, there is that need perhaps for a little bit more of a consultation as to the exact scope of the high level body and how to make sure that it addresses a lot of the concerns that colleagues have raised today. So just to reiterate again that we hear you and that this will be a continuous process, but that there is still that hope that the Secretary General can make recommendations and take decisions as to how we can allow the, the IGF and the MAG to strengthen and evolve over time so that we are collectively united in moving the entire organization and process forward. Thank you, Yuping, and uh, thank you all for staying a little bit beyond time, and thank you for the scribes for staying as long as they could. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Um, again, uh, we will have a summary report. It's going to be separate from the MAG meeting and open consultations, and we're going to post this on the IGF website, and we're going to include it with all the other contributions that um, we have received. So um, thank you all, and have a good rest of the day to all. Mm. Thank you, bye bye. Um, Shengatai, can you just um, remind everyone to join the networking session? Yes, as I said, there is a networking session. The link is in the chat. Um, so you can just click that link and you can come in and join the networking session. Thank you. Mm.